most of the surrounding circumstances we experience can be studied through differential equations. Check out the different applications of first-order DEs in this video. Welcome to Engineering Mathematics. There are different applications of first-order differential equations, some of which are velocity of escape, exponential growth and decay, Newton's law of cooling, simple chemical conversion, logistic growth and price of commodities, orthogonal trajectories, dilution, electrical circuits, and others. Let's start off with the velocity of escape. Consider the problem of determining the velocity of a particle projected in a radial direction outward from the Earth and acted upon by only one force, which is the gravitational attraction of the Earth. It is assumed an initial velocity in a radial direction so that the motion of the particle takes place entirely on a line through the center of the Earth. According to Newtonian law of gravitation, the acceleration of the particle is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the particle to the center of the terrestrial body. If we denote acceleration as a and small letter r as the variable distance, we can mathematically translate the law as a is proportional to the reciprocal of the square of r. From the general proportionality, we can convert it to equality by adding a constant k, so a is equal to k all over r squared. And we can say that k is equal to the acceleration multiplied by the square of r. If we maximize the variable distance to the radius of the terrestrial body, then we will need to denote this radius as capital R. And the acceleration due to the gravitational pull of the body will be negative g. Plugging these new parameters in Newtonian gravitational law, we get negative g is equal to k all over r squared, where k is also extracted as negative g times capital R squared. And by equating k, we can say that a is equal to negative g multiplied by capital R squared all over r squared. From earlier discussions in physics, you would have come across the idea that acceleration is the change of velocity with respect to time, or dv, all over dt. But in our case, we do not need time, but we are to relate acceleration with the radius of a body. So we multiply the derivative of radius all over itself to acceleration. Now note that we can group dr all over dt as a change of distance r over the change in time t, which is actually velocity v. Thus, acceleration can be transformed to v dv all over dr. Then place back the rest of the working equation we derived earlier. It is quite notable that we have a variable separable equation, so move dr to the other side. You can also simplify the integration by transforming the denominator into its reciprocal. Then we are ready to integrate. Consider negative g times the square of capital R as a constant, and we arrive at the following equation. Cancel the negatives to get v squared is equal to 2g times capital R squared all over R plus c. This is the general solution for velocity of escape. We continue to determine the particular solution, where we take the initial situation. So at the start, v will be denoted as v0, and if we take the initial placement of the particle, it will be located at the surface of the body it will escape from, so small r is capital R this time. Plug these values to have the following equation, where we can simplify capital R, thus the constant c is determined as v0 squared minus 2g times capital R. So the particular working solution for velocity of escape is v squared is equal to 2g times capital R squared all over R plus v naught squared minus 2g times capital R. Now let's analyze the working equation we derived. The velocity that a shuttle should use is more than the gravitational pull of the terrestrial body in order to escape the body. 
at that time the particle escaped, small r should already be a big value, say infinity, and if this is the case, the whole term of the function will be divided by infinity which will make everything zero. To be able to escape the gravitational pull, we can equate velocity equal to zero as if the shuttle's velocity will cancel out with the gravitational pull. So we can come up with equating the two terms. So escape velocity is taken as the root of 2g multiplied by the radius of the terrestrial body. Let's take the case of the Earth. A shuttle can move out to space away from the gravitational pull of the Earth with VE equated as 2 times 9.8 meters per square second, the gravitational pull of Earth, and Earth's radius of 6,378,000 meters. So a shuttle should have 11,180 meters per second velocity. Let's take another example. The radius of the moon is roughly 1080 miles. The acceleration of gravity at the surface of the moon is about 0.165 g, where g is the acceleration of gravity at the surface of the Earth, determine the velocity of escape for the moon. Since we have derived the formula for VE, we can just plug the given values 0.165 of g, which is 32.2 feet per second squared, and this is multiplied by 1080 miles as given by the problem. Before taking the root, Note that the conversion of units should be used for feet and miles, so we get the escape velocity as 1.47 miles per second. This is just like 2,365.736 meters per second, which would show that it is easier to escape the moon than Earth as it has weaker gravitational pull. Mm -hmm.